horses have been around in art since day one. Quite literally, in fact. The prehistoric Lascaux cave paintings, estimated to be 17,000 years old, are generally speaking seen as one of the oldest remaining pieces of art. And yes, they depicted the horse. Ever since, horses would appear frequently throughout art history up to this very day. Think of equestrian statues during the Italian Renaissance, the portraits of kings on their horse during Baroque and Classicism, but also Native American art, or even modern art. Think of Vasily Kandinsky's writer from 1911, or Salvador Dali's surreal horse in The Temptation of Saint Anthony from 1946. Doing so, the horse as a motif or as a visual subject has a varied tradition throughout art history. It's been used to express power by leaders, but also as an eerie motif. Think of Henry Fuseli's painting The Nightmare from 1781, or Eugène Delacroix's Horse Frightened by Lightning from 1829. However, in this video we won't be reciting the history of horses in art. Instead, we're gonna look at horses today. In what way have horses been implemented in contemporary art? And in what manner do they play upon the artistic tradition of horses in art? Welcome to Horses in Contemporary Art, from Bodomont to Maurizio Catalan. Untitled, Cavalli, by Janis Kunelis from 1967. We open our list with one of the earliest examples, and arguably also one of the most radical examples, of implementing the horse as a motif or a visual subject in a contemporary artwork. Born in 1936 in Greece and passed away in 2017 in Rome, where the artist used to reside and work, Janis Kunelis was a key figure for the arrival of Arte Povera as a true postmodern art movement. Yonis Cornelis worked in sculpture, performance, installation and painting, even though the artist insisted he was a painter above anything else, inspired by the likes of Jackson Pollock, Lucio Fontana, Franz Klein or Alberto Burri. Cornelis undermined the sanctity of the gallery space, creating art from cheap materials up to living animals. Doing so, in January of 1969, he showcased his installation, untitled Cavalli, from 1967 during the inaugural exhibition at the Galleria Lattico in Rome, in which 12 horses were stationed around the gallery for three days. The horses were tended by professional grooms and returned to the stables every evening, but during the day they faced the gallery walls, leaving a void in the center of the gallery space, becoming an utmost revolutionary work of art. The core of the artwork is of course an act of displacement, putting these horses into a gallery context. In the tradition of Marcel Duchamp, Cunelis uses these horses as ready-mates, but instead of using found or mass-produced objects, he uses living animals. However, yet again Cunelis conceived the installation pictorially as a painter. The rectangular gallery space in the underground garage references the shape of a canvas for the Greek-Italian artist. In a way, the horses become part of the architecture of the space, attached to the walls and positioned at regular intervals, creating a rhythm across the exhibition space. The Horse by Michael Bormans from 2015. The connection with the art historic tradition of painting and all its motifs is never far away with Michael Bormans. Born in 1963 in Gerardsbergen and residing and working in Ghent, Belgium, Michael Bormans is one of the most influential contemporary figurative painters of his generation. He is best known for his unique combination of a traditionally rendered painterly technique and an absurd, surreal and often conceptual subject matter. Boromans is a self-taught painter, with Velázquez and Caravaggio as his teachers. As a result, he is strongly connected to Baroque painting from a technical perspective. Doing so, an anachronism emerges between the painterly technique and its contemporary subject matter. With The Horse from 2015, Bodemans reaches out to art history and the history of painting once more. The Belgian master is well aware of the historic tradition of painting horses and engages with it in a very direct yet subtle manner. Painting horses is one of the most difficult subjects for painters, similar to painting hands or those chubby angels named Putti. One more reason for the artist to paint this monumental masterpiece measuring almost 4 meters by 3. 
As a result, it is no coincidence to see Bormans taking on this motif of horses in painting. The composition is reminiscent to da Vinci's drawings of horses and the texture mimicry of the silky coat of hair of the horse emulating with masters such as George Stubbs or Peter Paul Rubens. The light reflects off the majestic hair of the horse, creating a dazzling visual illusion and an exceptional example of mimesis. However, simultaneously, Boromans also reminds us that the painted horse is not a real horse. It is just an image, a painting, a lie, albeit a beautiful one. The hoofs of the horse's hind legs are intentionally incomplete and in strong contrast with the meticulously rendered body of the horse. Furthermore, the setting is as incomplete as those two hoofs, with an almost magically painted horse standing in a gritty environment. Boromans makes us fall in love with his virtuoso brushstrokes and mastery of mimesis and baroque painterly techniques, before telling us the painting is a lie. The horse is not a horse, only a depiction of a horse, making us question the meaning of its shadow on the gritty wall with Plato's theory of ideas luring beneath the surface. To Zerberin by Berlin de Breikra from 2015. Another artist who is even more famous for consistently implementing the horse into her artistic practice is none other than Berlinde de Breukere. Born in 1964 in Ghent, Belgium, where the artist continues to work and resides. De Breukere is a contemporary sculptor and installation artist, creating haunting distortions of organic forms. Berlinde de Breukere does not create true taxidermies, as is the case with Damien Hirst or Maurizio Catalan. In fact, she creates her equine sculptures using casts made of wax, animal skins, textile, metal, wood and hair. The central theme of her oeuvre is very clear. Vulnerability, suffering and the overwhelming power of nature. With two Zurbaron from 2015, one of her many equine sculptures, we encounter a blindfolded foal with its legs bound lying on a wooden table. The lighting and the composition is directly inspired and referenced to the Spanish master Zurbaron and his iconic Lamb of God, painted during the first half of the 17th century. The Breukere confronts us with suffering and the fragility of life. However, she does not aim to shock us. Instead, she provides solace. As the artist has stated herself, she aims to show the viewer a helpless body, such as this young foal, without us having to be afraid of it. Instead, it can be also something beautiful. This subtle interplay of comfort and the disturbing is a true continuum throughout the Breukers' impressive oeuvre. When she was asked why she started to use equine forms as her subject matter, the Belgian artist replied they enable her to amplify the intensity and scale of the suffering. She felt as if it was not possible to depict or evoke the vast immensity of deep suffering and true pain with the human figure. With horses, the weight of the figures and the suffering increases exponentially. The Incredible Journey by Damien Hirst from 2008 Born in 1965 in Bristol and currently residing and working in London, Damien Hirst is one of the most influential sculptors of his generation and was the true poster boy of the young British artists. With the formal de Hyde sculptures of his Natural History series, we encounter a body of works which are as iconic as they are shocking and contested. Hearst rose to fame in the 1980s and 1990s with notorious artworks pushing not only the boundaries of art and contemporary sculpture, but also of good taste and what is morally acceptable in art. Whereas Berlinde de Breuker uses casts of wax for her equine subjects, Hearst's animals, encompassing sharks, cows, zebras and more, are as real as they are dead. By manner of a chemical compound called formaldehyde, which is best known for its antibacterial and preservative properties, Hearst preserves real corpses in monumental tanks filled with the light blue transparent liquid. Doing so, Hearst reaches the peak of his fascination for life versus death, but also science versus religion. With The Incredible Journey from 2008, we encounter another example of the artist's striking yet notorious natural history series. The wide-framed tank, reminiscent to minimal art structures and aesthetics, consists of one of the most beautiful species to wander the planet, the zebra. 
The zebra becomes the ultimate collectible of naturalia, an age-old tradition strongly connected to art of collecting rare species. What an incredible journey it is. The Ballad of Trotsky by Maurizio Catalan from 1996. We conclude our list with arguably the most important and most consistent artist who implements horses into his conceptual artistic practice. Born in 1960 in Padua, Italy, residing and working in New York, Catalan is one of the most famous and controversial neoconceptual artists of his generation. Catalan takes inspiration freely from both the real world, such as people and objects, and also from the art world, as an irreverent operation aimed at institutions but also art in general. His works are strongly marked by humor and wit, creating playful sculptures and installations aiming to provoke his audience. He presents challenging contexts in order to force commentary and engagement, repositioning the value of the artwork from the object or the idea in the tradition of conceptual art to the discussion of the artwork. His taxidermy horses vary from horses with their heads stuck on the wall to hanging from the ceiling. One of his first taxidermized horse sculptures was The Ballad of Trotsky from 1996. Presented during Catalan's first solo exhibition in New York, the horse is suspended midair, with the title referencing the Russian revolutionary Leon Trotsky. Since the mid-1990s, Catalan implemented taxidermy to reflect his interest in the way people project their fears or fantasies onto animal representations. Trotsky was a very influential figure opposing Stalin in the 1920s. He represents utopia, but also persistent efforts to achieve a better world, which resulted in failure. The dangling hoofs symbolize the desperate situation of the horse and of Trotsky's efforts and the ideals he represents. Thank you so much for tuning in today. For our patrons, I will be sharing the images of this video with the slides and text on the Patreon page. Feel free to watch our video on the 20 most famous contemporary sculptors today next. And please consider subscribing to stay posted on more contemporary art. Bye.